everybody, how's it going? It's The Daily Shooter. And like a lot of you, I woke up this morning to some really bad news. This pertains to California, gun apocalypse, all of the gun laws that were heading to Jerry Brown's desk. Now, we all wondered when he was going to do something and what he was going to do. Well, he acted on it, and he acted on it fast. The bills only hit Jerry Brown's desk yesterday, Thursday, on the 30th of June. And he acted on them already this morning on the 1st of July. So he took no time at all to make decisions on amazingly sweeping unconstitutional laws. He took no time at all to just use the pen and sign the laws that he wanted to sign into effect. And let me tell you, even though he vetoed some of them, the ones that went through are significant. Okay, they are significant. And as for the people that are gonna say, well, what do we do now? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna tell them to kiss my ass that they wasted their time that they wasted the time legislating this because I won't comply to unconstitutional laws. This is not me trying to be some type of internet badass or tell anybody, oh, you know, come and take it. No, this is me telling you that I won't comply because you do not have the right to step on my rights. You don't have the right to go above the Constitution and take away my rights as an individual and a citizen of this country. So I'm standing up for my rights. What you do is on you. Now here's the laws that passed, okay? This is basically what is going to be taking effect. These are signed. These are now going to be law in the state of California. The first one is the loaning of firearms to your family. You can't do that anymore, okay? If you want to loan a firearm to your brother, loan a firearm to your father, hey, you can take this out hunting. Oh, and he wants to go to the range. Nope, you, you can't do that, okay? Now it does say, and I, I need to read the wording of the law, um, that you can't do it in it, uh, uh, not, uh, the occasional loaning of firearms, okay? So the occasional loaning of firearms is what they're saying that you can't do. I don't know if that doesn't mean you can't loan it once and then they give it back and maybe once a year or something like that. But the occasional loaning of firearms, it says that that's, that's gone. Now, excuse me because I am throwing this video together as quickly as possible to give you guys this information. Uh, 880 also passed, okay? 880 is a big one. 880 is huge. They have redefined what is now an assault weapon or considered an assault weapon here in the state of California. So basically in the state of California, if you had something that was able to have a detachable magazine without the use of a tool, okay, so you could just readily take out the magazine, put it back, and it had certain features, then it was considered an assault weapon, okay? Now what they've done with 880 is they've said that any center fire rifle or a center fire, even a pistol or a shotgun that has these features and the ability to have a magazine that is detachable even with the use of a bullet button is now considered an assault weapon. What they're mandating is that the firearm action must be taken apart in order for you to reload the firearm. So let's say that you have an AR-15 and you have a bullet button right now. What they're saying is that instead of the bullet button, it has, a magazine has to be permanently fixed permanently like welded into the firearm that you have to then take the action open and reload the firearm through the action and then close everything back up okay so even this even goes to pistols if you have a pistol with a detachable magazine and you add any other features to it I'm not talking about like a flashlight but I'm talking about any other features to that uh, pistol that will now apply as an assault rifle uh, as an assault weapon excuse me or if you have a shotgun with like a rotary magazine or any of the evil features that they consider and the ability to let's say accept more than 10 rounds it's done so th these are basically laws that from what I hear so far and again I'm just kind of throwing this together off the cuff please excuse me if I'm wrong on any of this I suggest that you don't just watch my video you do your own research to make sure that you're double checking what I'm saying from what I understand, all this is going to take effect January of 2017. And I do see somewhere in there that this may be a grandfathering type of issue when it comes to what they would consider assault weapons. So uh, if you had something prior to January 2017 with a, with a bullet button, I guess you can keep that. I'm not sure. But again, they can kiss my ass. However, 880 also bans the sale of anything. So your FFL, okay, the guys who have to report every time they go and take a crap in the bathroom to the Department of Justice, those guys won't be able to sell you what you have now. They won't be able to sell you uh, what will be considered an assault weapon come January 2nd of 2017. So if you think, well, F this, I'm just going to not comply and I'm still going to go get one, your FFL won't have it. If they're a legitimate FFL and they know that their ass is going to be on the line every two seconds, they're not going to have that in stock for you. Okay, so we have another one here. 
So re the reporting of, of lost or stolen firearms, okay? If you have a firearm that's lost or stolen, and I bet you this is going to be because of confiscation, if you fail to report a lost or stolen firearm within a specific amount of time, which has now been shortened, you're now a felon, a felon, if that were to happen. So if you don't report it within that specific amount of time, you're now a felon in the state of California. You didn't even do anything wrong, okay? You didn't do anything wrong. Someone stole your personal property, and you're the criminal now. Now, the reason that I say I think that has to do with confiscation is because if they come knocking at your door and you say, you know what, somebody stole it, I lost my firearm, whatever the case is, they still have you on a felony because you would have, should have reported it whenever it happened. <clears throat> so they come knocking on your door and you say it's not here, guess what, felon. Okay, let's see, uh, we also have uh, another De Leon bill, 1235. Okay, 1235, guess what? Background checks for ammunition purchases. Sellers have to be certified. So you go to the gun show and you see some guy that's got a whole stockpile of ammunition that he's sitting there that he's selling, he goes around gun shows, tries to make a little bit of extra money to keep in his pocket, feed his family. He's not gonna be able to do that anymore unless he has a certificate. Unless he's able to have a certificate to sell you that firearm, or that, excuse me, that ammunition, and you pass a background check to get it. So this creates a Department of Justice database of ammunition purchasers. So now not only do you have to register your firearm and there's a, a excuse me, Department of Justice database for those firearm purchasers, now you have to have the same thing for ammunition. You have to have background checks each time you purchase ammunition and there will be a database of you and your ammunition purchases at the Department of Justice. Okay, and the last one that he signed. Officially banning high capacity magazines and any high capacity, menu, high capacity ammunition magazines that were previously grandfathered in. Okay, so recently I went out to a Southern California shoot and a lot of people think that they're illegal here and really they're not if they were grandfathered in before a specific time. A lot of people had 30 round mags out there, standard mags that were just plinking away, having a great time, great people, salt, salt of the earth people that would stand up and defend you if the time <clears throat> ever came. Well, now the Department of Justice is saying, nope, you can't have those grandfathered magazines anymore. You have to destroy them. You have to turn them into a local FFL, or you have to take them out of state. If you're caught in possession with them, you're now a felon. So basically what they've done now is they've taken a class of people who are just practicing a Second Amendment right in this country and a right to defend themselves and turn them into felons in multiple different ways. So again, I can't tell you what to do and I'm definitely not telling you to break the law, okay? Because I'm not gonna get in trouble here on video. But I'm telling you what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna do a damn thing. Nothing's changed for me from today moving forward. I might not be able to buy a firearm at my local FFL, fine. But I guarantee you that I will not comply. I will not comply, this is enough. And the more people that don't comply, the more of a voice that we have. The only way things will change is if you let them know that we will not change and we will not give in. Thank you everybody for watching. Please like, subscribe. Again, do your own research, see what you can find out about this stuff. Have a great day.